But first, let's meet our studio guests. And if you or someone close to you is considering their higher education options, this is going to be especially interesting. Because if you lived in the UK and wanted to find out about your university choices, chances are you'd end up at a large conference and be a faceless person in a crowd of thousands. But here in the Isle of Man, every year, there is a conference where the universities come to us and we can talk directly to them. Now, this higher education conference is held at Balakameen High School. The man tasked with organising it is Richard Caron. Hello Richard, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm all right, thank you. Now this is the 32nd year of the conference, but the first year you're organising it. How's that going so far? Yeah, it's pretty daunting. It's a big deal. Um, there's lots and uh, lots and lots of people coming over from England and um, it, there's an enormous amount of students in the Isle of Man who are very keen to know all about higher education. So there's a bit of a bit of pressure to make sure that we, put, we do it right, but it, it seems to be ready to go. We're in the right place, so... I'm pretty excited. And you're a former Balakameen student yourself? I am. I am a former Balakameen student, yeah, and I attended the conference in 1998, so uh, yeah, it was good. I remember going to the conference as well. Christy, do you, did you go to the... Yes, uh, I did. Yeah. I went to the conference too, yeah. I, th- I think that's. I, I may have made my choice while I was there, yeah. Yeah, I think I did. Um, and some of it might be based on how many freebies you get, because that's, it's always a good opportunity to pick up a new pen. You can certainly get... I reckon you could probably get an annual supply of pens. So you never need to run out of a pen after a higher education conference. <laughs> so how many delegates have you got? We've got 64 delegates um, coming from throughout the British Isles. Um, so, you know, as far north as uh, Dundee and as far south as Southampton. Um, we've also got people from the Isle of Man as well. We've got representation from opportunities available in the Isle of Man, not only at uh, the University College Man, but also uh, local companies are here to talk about their apprenticeships, um, lots of different training opportunities. So it's very exciting, not just for students who are thinking of going to England, but also those who want to advance their careers uh, here on the Isle of Man, which I think is it incredibly important that we make sure we cover as well that is crucial really isn't it because going away um for further education just isn't for everyone and that's okay it's not for everyone and financially it's not for everyone and i think it's very important we're you know we, we're a comprehensive school who are hosting this and i think it's very important that we provide a comprehensive um opportunity for everyone on the isle of man I am delighted uh, to this afternoon that we are also joined by one of the delegates from the University of Huddersfield, Jane Murphy. Welcome, lovely Hello. to have you with us. Um, you've been coming to this conference for a few years. What's your view on it? I've been coming for quite a long time. We don't need any persuasion. This is our favourite gig of the year. We, the hospitality is legendary. The organisation is brilliant. So we all really enjoy it. What do you see your main role as being then when you're over here? Uh, the main role is to promote higher education and or the university we represent. So informing the students, I come at the beginning of the week, I go around all the state schools and the island and, and talk to students about higher education, about the university itself. Um, and because it can be quite rushed, we don't want students to, to not have the information at the right time. So they need to really get their act together to think about where they want to go and what they want to do. So information giving, really. And I'm intrigued... Uh, as to how the delegates see the Isle of Man and particularly see the Isle of Man in giving students this sort of opportunity. We see them as very well informed students. They rarely come to the stand and ask for something that we don't provide, which can be very annoying sometimes. Um, so that they don't do that and they ask very good questions and they're usually just such nice kids. What, would you say there's a difference in, in the students that you meet from here to students that you meet further afield? Because it is something we talk about on the show on quite a regular basis that we are a bit different being on the Isle of Man. We're a bit more mm. sort of closeted. We're, it feels a bit safer here. And it's a really big deal for us to make that move to, we, to, to go to the UK. Well, not, not only are they very pleasant, but they have a sense of identity, which I think can be lost, you know, over in the UK. They, they come from a specific place that has its own identity. And that's, that's really refreshing. And is there any sort of, you know, an element of trepidation from them, for instance, in the idea that they're going to have to go across this sea to go to university? Naturally, there is. But they know that most of the opportunities are over there. So they're going to have to go at some point. So finding out about it, um, finding out what the first step is, next step is and what the opportunities are. There'll be lots of universities they've never heard of. There'll be lots of courses they've never heard of. Uh, and that's what the fair is, is all about. It's the first step in, in that direction. Because I often think it must be much easier if you know from an early age exactly what you want mm-hmm. to do and the sort of path that you need to go down. But if you, you're approaching you know, the end of your your years here at Balakameen or one of the other the high schools on the island and you're thinking, I, I don't know what I want to do, what, what sort of advice would you have for I, people? In, I, in fact, I said to somebody this morning in the school I was in this morning because he said he didn't know what he wants to do. I said, well, if you don't know by the time the applications are closed, don't go till you do there's no law that says you have to go at 18 
And sometimes students are a lot better for taking time out and making a conscious decision to go to uni rather than going because everybody else is going because everybody expects them to go. Go when you're ready. And I mean, Richard was talking, you touched on the idea of finance because financially it's not viable for everyone. So to, to waste money on doing something yeah. you actually don't really want to do probably doesn't make much the sense. The people who drop out are usually the ones who've just made a last minute decision and the wrong decision, uh, which is a real shame. If you did decide though, Rich, to take that year out, how would that reflect on you potentially getting assistance with funding? On the Isle of Man? Yeah. It doesn't have any effect at all on the Isle of Man. The Isle of Man government will support students if they've gone through the system who want to go to university. That I've come back from England after 18 years in England. I cannot underestimate the incredible generosity of the Isle of Man government when it comes to sending students to university, and it's something that we really must never take for granted. Um, it's incredible. I went to a funding meeting uh, that my assistant head of sick form ran the other night, and I, I just was still sitting there looking at this PowerPoint thinking, wow, what a great government we have to do this for us. Because in England, I taught students who just were not able to go to university at all because they were not getting any assistance with the, the, the fees. So it's something that um, we should be very grateful for and something that I think we should also say thank you for every now and then. What if somebody, though, um, as James was, was saying, sort of makes makes a decision and then ultimately finds out, oh, no, I made the wrong one? I mean, is it too late once you, you've gone through that application process? It depends on what time of the academic year it is. From the university's point of view, if the earlier the better, to, if you're going to change your mind, you might be able to swap over uh, a course. Obviously, we would rather they stayed within the same university, and also then you've got the funding issues, haven't you, Richard? Yeah, there is there are a, there is a funding issue if you decide that if you're there and you decide you don't want to carry on, that is a problem because obviously the Isle of Man government have committed funding for you, and therefore you would have to um, you'd have to repay some of that because the, you could you couldn't expect the government to pay for something that's not being provided. Um, this is why this conference is so important because if you have the opportunity to talk to 64 people face to face which so many people in England don't get then you should take it you should really take it and and if you do your research as Jane has said then hopefully not too many people will drop out and as a head of sixth form of Balakameen this year I have not had a single student coming to me to say that they've dropped out of their course in England from last year. What happens if you don't get the grades you need though because that's um, something that does unfortunately happen to some people. It depends what you're going for. Sometimes there's um, like a foundation degree, which is the equivalent of about two thirds of a degree, which can have lower entry requirements that you might be able to get into and then top it up to a full degree afterwards. Um, but in some cases, it might be that you have to step back and rethink and add to the qualifications that you've got. How common is it then, would you say, that um, people who turn up to this conference work out exactly where they want to go, choose exactly the right course and then end up following that path from just going to this conference. I'd ask Aaron if I were you. <laughs> yeah, we were talking to one of your colleagues as we came in. Um, I'm a York University person, obviously James from Huddersfield, so the first two people we met at Manx Radio were, was an, uh, were people from York and Huddersfield yeah. University. It was very strange. And one of the people said, well, the, the colleague you have from Huddersfield University said that he chose his university and his course after a conversation with Jane in 2011 and his, his life has changed ever since that moment. So things will change tomorrow. This is why it's so exciting, this event. Tomorrow and tomorrow night and on Friday, people's lives will take a different path because of this opportunity they've got. And it is very, very exciting. And Jane, obviously one of the reasons you are over here is to sell University of Huddersfield. Yep. How, uh, how did you do that then? Well, Manx students tend to like the University of Huddersfield because it's not too big and overfacing. Although we are a medium-sized university from a population point of view, the footprint of it isn't huge, so it's not scary. Although some people would prefer a bigger place. And the best thing is, when you visit it, will you be happy there for three or four years? And a lot of the students come and visit it, and they see it, and they like what they see. So. I suppose that's, that's one of the really key things for us as islanders, isn't it? To make sure that you don't just sort of read the, the, the blurb that you're given. It is to actually go and yes. visit the place. Yeah, very, very important to do that because every single university is different and you need to be in the right place for you. 
So what a fantastic opportunity then having this conference over here. Um, Richard, give us all the details. Who can go along? When is it happening? Well, I, I was actually just thinking I must try and make sure I say it's just as important for the parents to go along. And, and one of the reasons is the human side of that. If you're going to meet a delegate, whether it's Andrea from University of York or Jane from University of Huddersfield, when you get a real feel, they represent their universities, they're the face of their universities, and you get a real feel for the ethos of the place. Um, and I remember talking to lots and lots of different universities universities and re- getting a real feel for York and getting a real feel for Sterling where I also applied and I think that's important that parents get that too because the parents have to they're the ones who are sitting at home wondering what's going on over there so I think it helps if they know about it tomorrow night um the uh, 6 45 there is a talk that Jane uh, will give uh, alongside Andrea Bourne from the University of York and Gail Corrin from the University College Man. And they are going to talk about higher education to start the event, just to give the parents some ideas of what's going on, um, what's it like to, to be in England and studying, or what's it like to be on the Isle of Man and study, and talking about how, to, how people have to adjust for these challenges. At 7 o'clock, uh, sorry, at 7.15, the doors of the Isle of Man higher education fair will open and the chief minister is there to open it tomorrow night and they will open and then there'll be two hour opportunity on thursday evening for people to walk around and to get to know some of the delegates on the friday um every school on the island including king williams college has got a slot to come along however it's not just for students if there are any parents or any one else who was fancies going to university doesn't matter what age you are um come um, to Balakameen High School on um, Friday morning, uh, or, or Friday up to two o'clock, in fact, and um, come into the sports hall. I'll be there, hopefully, to say hello to you uh, and to, to help you find your way around. But it's for anyone, anyone who wants to go and find some higher education. And um, Jane, just to reiterate, you mentioned preparation there. What mm-hmm. is the sort of preparation and research that they need to do before they get there? I would be looking up online which universities do the subject that you're interested in, um, then sort of geographically filtering them as to ones that it's feasible to go to and who you want to speak to on that stand and find lots of questions to ask. Because we really like having conversations rather than can I have a prospectus? You know, we really like to have conversations with them and, and make it personal. And grab a pen. So just and grab a good pen. We've got some fabulous pens this year and badges. And mm. car stickers. Oh. Don't forget the car stickers. Gosh. <laughs> Best. Do you know what we've done today, though? What? We've wait, made one of Richard's dreams come true. I know, right? Tell us, Richard, go on quickly before you have to leave. <laughs> With the whole story, am I, am I allowed to mention the television programme involved? Possibly not that, no. Okay, so there was a television programme when I was younger um, where you would right away and tell somebody what your dream was as a kid and you, you, this, this person said that they would make the dream come true, not mentioning anything. Um, and I remember riding, I was Murray's Road, prior, I was at Murray's Road, I think, and I remember riding and saying, my dream day would be to go to Manx Radio and be on Manx Radio. At 37 <laughs> years old, I've made it. Oh. I've made it. And was it everything you hoped it's for? It's even better. It's <laughs> even better.